Sorry, John. I remember brushing that little head of curly black hair. I remember at horse shows when you would make the whole camper shake because you were so excited about your video games and you were jumping up and down in front of the TV. I remember you turning upside down in your chair while I was trying to teach you school. I thought you weren't paying attention, but you could give me all the answers when we were done with the lesson. And I remember you crawling into my lap to cuddle. Wait, you still try to do that sometimes. And I remember driving down the road one day. You were little enough to be in your car seat and you were quiet in the back, which was unusual. And you said something like, Mommy, God is inside us, right? I said, yes, he is. And you said, so that means if he's inside us, we have all his power in us and we're just as strong as he is. I remember that, son, and I hope you always do. Hey, BJ, I remember when you were on a family farm in South Africa learning to ride a bicycle from the lake back to the house on that sandy road. What a great time you had. One of my favorite memories of Abby growing up was during her third birthday party. Elizabeth was real young and she wanted a door theme. We had all kinds of activities planned, but she was Queen Dora that day. And as she wandered around the yard with all her friends and a map and, and, a map and obstacles, watching out for Swiper, pulling lollipops off the trees, getting past the Grumpy grumpy old old troll. troll, yeah. Uh, at the end, the finish line, she come to her brand new swing set. And when she got to the swing set with all her friends, she realized there was a treasure chest inside. And what was significant was she wanted everybody to share in that day with her. It wasn't all about her. It was about everybody having fun together. And as they all peered into that treasure chest, all the gems that came out of that, she shared easily and equally with everyone and that was an impressive feat at that age alex all of my bestest memories of you all revolve around you being fearless never afraid to run outside in the snow in zero degrees never afraid to jump into cam creek freezing cold water not afraid to go fishing with just a line and a hook not even a pole You've always been fearless, and God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. As you move forward in your future, let God guide you. Continue to be fearless. Continue to jump in and help others. Continue to, to go on the path that God has set for you with no fear. You know, I couldn't believe it when your mom said that you passed. I was amazed. You did it. I can't believe it. You actually did it. <sighs> Some of my favorite memories include um, going to the Princeton Public Library, um, especially when they built the new library, and we would go once a week and check out books. I know it's probably not your favorite memory because some days you didn't really want to go, but we went anyway. Um, and I hope you'll always remember those days, especially the day that your mom had to chase this guy up the steps and out the front door because he has sold my purse. Um, anyway, uh, Girl, Scout, uh, Girl Scouts was another great memory when you were little um, and selling Girl Scout cookies. Uh, from middle school on, I've loved watching you run cross country and um, going to track meets and watch you run. Uh, even though sometimes it was freezing cold, pouring rain, 30 degrees, snowing, and sometimes when Hannah was running track, we would sneak over to Miss Susie and Pastor Scott's bench and steal their heater for just a few minutes because it was so cold. Um, but like Pastor Scott said this morning, it wasn't about the sport. It was about being devoted to you. And no matter if you had did good that day or you placed, um, it was just a special time for me just watching you. And um, anyway, kindergarten graduation, middle school graduation, um, the National Honor Society induction at high school, 
um, oh wait, uh, COVID stole that from us. We didn't get to have that, but I know that um, it would have been a very special time. Um, and then there's that one time we went to Monticello because you loved history um, back when you were in middle school. And I kept telling you that we were kin to Thomas Jefferson and you didn't believe me. But anyway, now you know um, that we really are kin to Thomas Jefferson. And that was a great day when we went there. And, but out of all the things that we've done um, and that we've experienced together, I can honestly say just being your mom is probably truly my favorite thing. Um, you have been such a caring and kind and had the most gentle soul since um, the day you were born. And it really shows. And I'm so thankful for you. And I can honestly say you have been my best friend, especially over the the last few years. There's been some times that I probably wouldn't have made it without you. Um, so I just want you to know that I love you and that you are truly the daughter that every mom hopes and prays that they have. And no matter where life takes you or where you go in this life, um, uh, your mom is always your biggest fan and I'll always be right here um, if you ever need to come home. Love you. Um, I remember when um, I used to have to sing Brad like six, seven, or eight songs to get him to go to sleep at night. I remember yeah, I'd have to sing Baby Mine, all kinds of songs. Mm -hmm. Baby Mine was his favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not funny. It's not funny, but it's really sweet. But it's not funny. It's really sweet. Um, I remember he would say, he would say, Oh, thanks. Instead of thanks. Th yeah, instead of thanks. Thanks. Like, oh, thanks. It was so, so I cute. I remember that. I would never correct him. But it's really sweet. It was, it was so funny. precious. That was, that was dumb. It was really sweet. You wouldn't correct a, a kid that's saying pronouncing something wrong. No, because it was sweet. Mm -hmm. it I wanted funny. to. Okay, so what is funny? Now he what? goes up with a lisp. No, he does. <laughs> like, look, I get to go on wine. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, this is about Brad. Okay, what do you remember? That's funny. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> He was acting like he was a ninja. <laughs> Kid you not. I don't know that he was acting like a ninja. Yes, he was. He was. Just, look at his ninja sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had a ninja sword, and he goes to put it back in its sleeve. Or the sheath? Sheath. Is that what it's called? No, I'm not a ninja. <laughs> ass <crap. laughs> So he goes to put it back, and who? He cuts himself. Mel cuts right his, on his hand. And Mel right cuts there. his thumb off. Mm -hmm. And this only happened like two years yeah. ago. Yeah, I had to take him to the ER. <laughs> he still has a scar. He'll show you. <laughs> he was like, oh my God. My thumbs off. No, he was really calm about it. Well. Yeah. He just wanted a band-aid. <laughs> it needed more than a band-aid. Stitches later. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I guess the advice we would give after all these years <laughs> is probably. Don't play with knives or anything sharp. Right. Don't do anything stupid. That's what we're getting at. Yeah. Don't do anything stupid. Um, I remember when Luke was little. Um, we used to go to different churches before we found this church, and um, we was in a, 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 I think it was a Baptist church, and. They were asking for prayer requests and, and, and then unspoken requests. You know how they do when they say um, uh, a show of hands, uh, unspoken requests. And, and everybody raised their hand. And Luke was standing in the pew beside me and he raised his hand. And, and then we started to pray. And um, he tugged on my shirt and whispered. And, and I turned, looked down at him and said, what? And he said, he just looked up at me and he said, uh, he said, what'd you wish for? <laughs> and I just thought, you know what? Uh, that's a kid's point of view, and that's kind of um, what we have we have brought prayer to. And and he taught me a lesson. And he's taught me many lessons over the years. Um, he's been a pleasure to be his dad. It really has. I remember Reagan's first day of kindergarten. We're sitting in the cafeteria waiting for the kids to be dismissed the, and the principal's given us a big speech about how he doesn't want the parents to get emotional in front of the kids because it'll just feed on the kids um, meanwhile there's this one kid who is 
crying hysterical, hanging on to mom, having a fit. Um, I've often wondered who that kid was so I could just ask him if it all worked out. I know me personally, I went to the car and had an ugly cry. Taylor, I can't believe it's time for you to graduate high school. It was just yesterday that you were coming off the stage at Spanish Brook School, bringing me a white rose and me sobbing at your pre-K graduation. And now we're here celebrating you graduating high school. I am so proud of you. I am proud of all of your accomplishments, but more than that, I'm proud of the person that you have become. You have a heart of gold and you are not afraid to share that love with anyone. Kendall and I feel that every day of our lives. You are a very strong, determined young lady and you have not let the difficult times that you have had to endure beat you down. Instead, you have risen up. I know your senior year has not been exactly what you wanted it to be, but for me, watching you grow and thrive in your faith, in your friendships, and in your confidence has been priceless. I love you, Taylor Grace Thompson, and I am truly blessed to be your mama. I can't wait to see what your future holds.